murder case for Nick Carter. Master Detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detection fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's strange adventure... The Professor's Secret. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Z-Rays. It's working, Dad. Why, that wound in the guinea pig's shoulder is healing. Why, it's only about half the size as it was before. Yes, Jean. It looks as if my new invention was a success. All that I need to do now is build a full-scale model... And I shall be ready to bring a new era of healing to the entire world. Oh. Don't move either. Yeah, what what is it? Just stand where you are and put your hands in the air. What do you want? We have no money we here. We don't want money. We want that Z-ray machine of yours. Shut it off. But you can't. Shut, shut it off, it. I said. All right. Now fix that machine so we can take it with us. And no funny business either. Pack it up good, Pop. Better do it, Dad. Uh, These men mean business. Oh, very well, Jean. Just as you say... Hurry up, Pop. we got a long way to go. How did you know how to find this place? That's our business, lady. Ready, Pop? Uh, yes, it's ready. But be careful of it. Don't worry. They'll take good care of it. All right, Bill, you and Jake take it out to the car. And treat it gentle. Okay, come on, Jake. What are you going to do with it? That machine heals okay, cuts and bruises and things, don't it? Yes. If it'll do that, it'll heal holes made by guns, too. Save a lot of wear and tear on the boys. You mean... You mean you're going to use that wonderful machine to help your gangsters? Sure thing, kid. Now, you two get your hats and coats. You're going with us. But that's kidnapping. You can't do that. Get your hat, Pop. I ain't got all day. Come on, Dad. It's, it's no use arguing. Oh, all right, Jean. Get your hands up. You're surrounded. Oh, no. Tony, I got Jake. But I got one of them, Tony. Any more of them, Bill? I don't know. Maybe that guy was just bluffing. We got to get out of here. We'll leave Jake here. A dead man's no good to us. All right, in the car, you two. Hurry it up. All right, in there, Mick. Come on, come on. Come Get on, going. Let's go. Let's go. In there. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, there he is. Thank heaven. Nasty gash in his head, though. Come on, Scubby. Oh. Wake up, will you? Come on, Scubby. Oh. Oh. Is that you, Nick? Yes, Scubby, it's Nick. What happened? Oh. Well, you said to meet you here. You didn't get here. Gang started off with the machine and the prof and his daughter. I tried to stop them. One of them shot me. Well, I got one of them first... I think. Yes, you sure did, Scubby. They left his body here. You all right now? Yeah, I, I guess so. Good. Come on. Let's see if this dead gangster has any identifications on him. Probably not, but he might have. Let's see. No, nope. doesn't seem to be a thing. Here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's wearing a money belt. Specially made. Made by Weaver Manufacturing Company, Brooklyn. Well, if it's a special kind of belt... Maybe they know who they made it for. Yes, maybe. We'll find out anyway. Oh, uh, another thing, Nick. Hmm? I got a good look at one of the gang just before I went down. Good. And his face was all covered with those peculiar dark-colored splotches that you told me about last winter, remember? The, uh, that Asiatic skin disease. Oh, yes. That's a real clue, Scubby. Very few doctors can treat that disease, and it requires regular treatment. When we get back to town, you make it your job to find the doctor who treats him and get his name and address. All right, Nick. But how did you know this robbery was going to take place right here and at this time? A very peculiar thing, Scubby. As you know, I've been on the trail of this gang for weeks. Yeah. Well, I finally found a restaurant where several of the gang eat. Had lunch there this noon. Two of the gang were there. I couldn't hear what they said, but I could read their lips enough to find out about their plan to rob the professor. So I called you back from your vacation in Connecticut, hoping that we could warn the professor and maybe block their plans and capture them. But what happened to you? You were late getting here. Oh, some drunken fool ran into me and locked his car into mine. So it took a wrecking crew to separate us. Just bad luck, that's all. Yeah, we might have had them if you'd been here, too. Well, too late for that. Let's get back to town and work on what clues we have. All 
right, Pop. Get that machine of yours going. I want to try it out and be sure it's okay. Shall I untie him, Tony? Sure. He's got to use his hands to make that thing work. But leave the girl tied up. Okay. There you are, Pop. I'll get busy. Jean, you think I'd better... Better do as they say, Dad. If you don't, they may kill us. The kid's right, Pop. Better do as we say and make it fast. Very well. Give me the machine. Here you are, Pop. Make it work. Why... I can't make it work. Huh? The main adjuster coil is missing. You mean it won't work without something that ain't there? As long as that coil is missing, I can't demonstrate it for you. It won't work. Look here, Pop. Are you trying to kid us? No, I assure you, I'm quite serious. That machine won't work without the coil. If Bill brought that thing down here just the way you gave it to him, you must have left it up there yourself. Perhaps I did. I was very nervous. Why, you old son of a dried-up mummy? I believe you did this on purpose. I believe you've tricked us. What's the diff, Tony? If he's got to have the coil, he's got to have the coil. If it ain't here, we got to get it. Yeah, you're right, I guess. What does it look like, you old goat? It's a small coil of green-covered wire, about four inches across. The last time I saw it was lying on the bench near where the machine was. Take a couple of the boys, Bill, and get it. First thing in the morning. And pop... You better pray they find it. Yes, Nick, Stubby just called me. That special money belt was made for a man named Jake Shackley. Lives at 47 East Pitt Street. Yes, Stubby said he was going to try to... Here it is. 47 East Pitt Street. <laughs> Fine old dump. Wager Shackley's not the only crook who lives here. Oh, clerk. Yes, sir. What room's Jake Shackley in? Shackley? Oh, I don't know anybody by that See name. See this, do you? Oh, Yes, sir. Uh, Shackley lives in number 42, but uh, he's out just now. Yes, I expect he is. I just want to look over his room. Any objections? Oh, no, sir. Uh, go right ahead. It's on the fourth floor, sir. Uh, stairs over there. You want the key? No, thank you. I've got one. I'll wait up there for a while. If anybody comes in looking for Shackley, send him up. I might like to talk to them. The man you describe is one of my patients. Uh, he comes here twice a week for X-ray treatment. Uh, if you have the proper authority, I can give you his name and address. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, I see. Uh, that is quite satisfactory. Now here, uh, here... Here you are. James Duane, 47 East Pitch Street. Glad to help you. Uh, good day. Number 37. Yeah, this is the room. I wonder if anyone is in. We'd better be leaving, Jim. It's a long way up there. But, Bill, how come the coil wasn't with the rest of the stuff when you brought it down? That old fat head of a professor left it behind on purpose. Oh, when do we leave? Just as soon as Trap gets here. Mm. Do right now. Somebody else coming. Maybe I better get out of the... Looking for somebody, bud? Oh. Oh, I was just, um... I was just trying to find room nine. I'm nearsighted. Go on inside. We'll talk about it there. Go on inside. Oh, sure. Sure. Hey, Trap. Hey, where'd you get that guy? He was listening outside your door. Know him? Know him. I thought I killed him up at the professor's place. You mean this is the dick who tried to stop you up yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. That pretty bandage on his head covers up the place where I put my slug. Well, he's here now anyway. Yeah, and we'd better get rid of him. So we can be on our way. How about leaving him here and turning on the gas? Simple and efficient. Not here. This is my room. But there is a small empty room across the hall. Only one window. We can stuff the cracks with newspaper and leave him in there, tied up. That's a good idea. With the gas turned on, he won't last long. 
When they find him, we'll be miles from here. We won't be in the picture at all. Well, Nick, his clue certainly turned out to be a total loss. Not a thing in the room that's of use. Nobody dropped in. Uh, Mr. Jake Shackley must have lived a very lonely and uninteresting life. Uh, Nick, you better try another lead. Let's start by walking down those three flights of stairs. I would pick a clue that leads me to a place without an elevator. Hey, wait. A strong smell of gas on this floor. Better look into this. It must be down this way. Now, the smell's stronger here. Yeah, this must be the room. Number 36. Didn't even lock the door when they left. Hope they don't take me for one of the uninvited. Might not like my... Scuppy! Scuppy, what in the... He pours that gas jet. There. Now for the window. Hey, Scuppy. Scuppy, come on. Come on. Come on, Scuppy. Now he's out cold. Come on. Oh, he's all tied up. What's been going on here, anyway? I'll have to get him out of this. I... You're heavier than I thought, old boy. There. He's ought to be all right. Now for artificial respiration. One... Two, three. Relax. Rest. One, two, three. Hey, wh what's Relax. going on here? I smell gas. Any trouble, Mr. Hill? Man overcome. Gas. Turns out to be a friend of mine. Oh, dear. Don't know what happened. I just got here. Oh. I think he's coming around now. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. Hmm. He's opening his eyes. Scubby, Scubby, can you hear me? Scubby. Oh. Nick. Oh, Nick. Gang going back. Left something. Professor's house. Machine no good without it. Nick, hurry. Hurry, Nick. They can't get away. Oh, passed out again. Clerk, is our doctor around here? Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. Right in the next room. Get him. Oh, Doc. Hey, Doc. Come on out. You wanted Doc. All right, he'll be all right now. You and the doc take care of him. When he's okay, send him to my office at 3rd and 5th. I'll get back there as soon as I can. I've got a job to do. They can't wait. Are we nearly there, Nick? Practically, Patsy. The entrance is just around the bend ahead. Uh -huh. I'm going to run the car off the road into the bushes here so it can't be seen by anyone going by. How far is the professor's house from here? About 100 yards, through the woods there. Mm -hmm. You going to wait here? No. I'm cutting across to see if the gang's car is there yet. Where's that kid of mine? Now put it in the back, Nick. What's in it? Oh, a little gadget. You wait here for me. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, but, Nick, you're not going to try to catch the gang single-handed, are you? No, Patsy, I don't expect to, but you never can tell. <laughs> This game. Oh, I got him. I can see it. Okay, here. If I can get behind this bush. Oh, got me. After all, I did. You get him, Bill? I think so, but he got trapped first. Trapped dead. Want me to finish off the dig? No, no, we got the coil we come after. Nothing to keep us here any longer. I don't want to waste time hunting for a couple who's probably dead already. What about trap? Leave him there. It's a long way back to town. I ain't particular about making the trip with a corpse. Nick? Nick? Where are you? Oh, Patsy. Patsy. Yes, Over Nick? Here. In the bush. Oh, Nick. Nick, are you hurt? No. Not seriously, Patsy. Oh, thank goodness. They caught me off guard. Creased the back of my head with a shot. Oh, Nick, I was so scared that you were dead. No. Heard all the shooting, and then when their car rode off down the road and you didn't come back, I didn't know what to think. Oh. So I waited a little and then came over here to find you. Come on, and let me help you up. All right, thanks. Oh, oh, my. 
how my head aches. Oof. You'll have to drive us back to town, Patsy. I don't feel up to it. Well, gangster's car got such a head start, we'll never find them now. Oh, Patsy, you're wrong about that. Hmm? We can follow them no matter how much of a start they got. Who do you think you are, Dunninger? You're no mind reader or fortune teller either. No? We'll see. Come on. Sure we're on the trail of the other car, Patsy? Don't be funny, Nick. Of course we are. There hasn't been any crossroad or side road yet where they could have turned off. Well, that's a great weight off my mind. Nick, how can you be so sure we can follow them no matter what roads they take? Wait until we get to a place where there's another road they might have taken. Then I'll answer your question. Oh, you. I think I better call Scubby on the short wave and give him some instructions. I left word for him to wait till he heard from me. K.R. calling Y.N. K.R. calling Y.N. Come in. Y.N. to K.R. Ready here. Go ahead. K.R. to Y.N. Pick up reinforcements according to plan previously arranged. Have men and machines ready in one hour. Stand by for further orders. We'll call you again one hour from now. That's all. Y.N. to K.R. Okay. Okay. We'll wait your call in one hour. Signing off. Nick, you never told me. What are the code letters you use for identification? We use the last letter of our first name and the last letter of our last name. Mm-hmm. For instance, Nick Carter is K.R. And Scubby Wilson is Y.N. Mm-hmm. And mine would be... Well, mine would be Y.N. too. Patsy Bowen. Well, Scubby is Y.N., what would my letters be? Just add the first letter of your first name. Oh, the first letter. Mm-hmm. Well, you mean my letters then would be P.Y.N. That's right. Simple, isn't it? Hmm. Look, Nick, we're coming to a crossroads. Which way, Maestro? Well, if they're going where I think they're going, they'd take the right fork. So try that one. I'll slow down a little bit, though. Okay. Now what? Just a minute. Stop the car. Well, what is it, Nick? Look there, Patsy. Hmm? Looks like a firefly on the pavement. That's the answer to your question. Meaning what? It's not a firefly. It's a drop of luminous paint. Nick, you mean the other car is dropping those as they go along without knowing it? Exactly. All right, you can go ahead now. Oh, that's what you were doing when they shot you. Yes, Patsy. I rigged it up before we left the office. Then when I left you to see if they'd arrived yet, I found their car. No one was in it, so I fastened it on the chassis. Yeah. They came out and found me just after I'd finished the job. So that's why you weren't in any great rush. What is it, Nick? A phosphorus solution in a metal can with an adjustable nipple. Uh-huh. Enough to last for a hundred miles. They can't lose us this time. <laughs> longer are you going to keep us here tied up this way? Until my men bring back the missing coil. And it works. Uh, they should be back here by now if nothing's happened to prevent them. And for your sake, I hope... Ah. Here they are now. Well, we got it. Where's Trap? We left him there. You had a fight? Yeah. Dick tried to put our car out of commission while we was in the lab. Trap spotted him. And they shot it out. Trap lost. And the dick? He's still up there, too. Dead as a doornail. You fools! Bundlers! Can't you do anything without having trouble? We got the coil, Tony. Is that what you wanted? Of course, of course. But trouble always spells danger. Where is the coil? Here. Pop, take a look at this. Is it the right one? Yes. Yes, that is the coil. Do you have to have anything else to make that machine of yours work? No, it's all here now. All right. There's the rest of it on the table there. Get it going. I want to see it work. Very well. But it'll take time. It better not take too long. Otherwise, your daughter might find things happening to her she wouldn't like. Don't worry about me, Father. I can't help worrying about you, my dear. I'll work as fast as I can. It's just 9.30 now. I'll give you 15 minutes to get that thing working. But that won't be... Better not stop the talk. Time's going. Do as he says, Father. Very well, my dear. One minute gone. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Fifteen. 
K-R-Y-N. K-R to Y-N. Come in. Y-N to K-R. Ready. Go ahead. K-R to Y-N. I am now parked near Hideout. It's center one of three old tenement houses, East Haviland Road. Come at once. Bring men as previously planned. Surround house. We'll wait for you to arrive if possible. Come at once. That is all. Y-N to K-R. Understood. Leaving immediately. Should be there in 20 minutes. Signing off. Father, can't you hurry? I'm almost ready. Just a second. Twenty-five now. seconds. There. I, I think it'll work now. Ready, Pop? Yes. Turn on the current, please. I'll get it. Now then, what is it you wish to try? Try it on me, Tony. That dig got me in the shoulder. Very well. I'll try it on Jim's shoulder. Stand in front of the machine. Now a little closer. Uh, bring your shoulder a little lower so as to be directly in front of the rays. This ain't going to hurt, is it? You want your shoulder fixed up, don't you? Sure, sure. Shut right. up, then. No, stay right there. Steady now. Gee, feels good. Hey, Tony, look. The shoulder looks better already. Yeah. This will make us the tops of any gang in the whole world. How long will it take to fix him up as good as new, Pop? Well, this is only a small demonstration machine. It'll take several hours to complete the healing process. With a larger output of the Z-ray, it'll be much quicker. Hey, Tony, what's that? What's what? Them cars outside, did you hear them? Cars? Stopping here? Yeah, yeah, there was two of them. Hey, there they are. You fool! So you left that dick dead in the wood at the prof's lab, did you? Tony, I, I was sure he was dead. So Daddy's tracked us right here to our own hideout. But Tony, I... Hey, force, force. The cops, they surrounded the hall. How many of them are there? Five, five, them. They're all over. A dozen. We can take care of them. Bill, you and Jim, go down and give the boys a hand. Right. Five of you ought to be a match for a dozen of them, but work fast. There may be more along in a minute. Yeah, sure, Tony. Come on, guys. Come on, let's go. All right, come on. Now, you two, I'm going to close this door and lock it. Now, let me hear a peep out of either of you, and you'll get a slug in your back. So long as I got you two here with me, I got something to bargain with. And it's going to be a good bargain. One that'll get me out of here free and clear. <laughs> they all accounted for, Scubby? Yeah, Nick. Riley got them all. One dead and four wounded. Oh, what fools they are. So busy defending the front and back doors that they forgot that little side window. Yeah. Once we got a man in there, it was easy. And were they surprised to be attacked from the rear? Did you find out where the head of the gang is? No, Nick. We searched every room in the house except this one. He and the old man and his daughter must be in here. Well, I know they haven't gotten away. I watched the house from the time I called you until they got here. I'm positive nobody left the house. Now, let's find out. All right, you and now you might as well come out. You can't get away? Think so, Mr. Carter? So you know me, do you? Yes, I know you. And you know that you can't get away? I think you're wrong about that, Carter. What do you mean? I have a proposition to make. All right, what is it? If you let me go free and give me a half hour's start without trying to stop me, I won't harm either the old man or his daughter. But if you refuse, if you try to break down the door to get me, they'll both die before you can save them. Are they all right now? They are. How long they stay that way depends on you. Hey, what can we do, Nick? We can't let him kill the old man and the girl. I have a plan, Scubby. Yeah? Miss Pender, are you all right? I told you she was okay. I want to hear it from her own lips. Miss Pender, are you all right? Go ahead, yes, tell us. Yes, Mr. Carter, we're all right. Professor Pender, are you all right? Oh, what's the idea of all the talk, Nick? Let's do something. All right, Scubby, I'm running this. Oh, okay, Nick, just as you say. Professor Pender, are you all right? Yes, Mr. Carter. Nothing's happened to me. Your invention, perfectly safe? Yes, it's quite safe at present. If you try to do anything except let me go, you'll find the machine wrecked and both of them dead. Is your father all right, Miss Pender? Nick, what in heaven's name are you trying to... Quiet. Miss Pender, is your father all right? Yes, he's all right. Well, Carter, 
Now that you're sure everything's all right, are you going to accept my proposition or not? No, I'm not going to accept it. Then I'm afraid I'm going to have to kill both... <laughs> I can't understand it, Mr. Carter. Why, well, you couldn't see him through the door, and yet you shot him dead. Yes, Mr. Carter, it's incredible. He killed him without even knowing where to shoot. That's where you're wrong, Professor. I did know where to shoot. Oh, Nick, you're not going to tell me that you have X-ray eyes or something. No, Scubby, I won't tell you that. But how in the name of all that's wonderful could you know where to shoot? Use my ears, Scubby. Your ears? Yes. I made the three people in that room talk to me until I had a mental picture of just where each one of them was. Yeah. Then when I was sure in just what direction the crook's voice was coming from and was sure that neither the professor nor his daughter were near enough to be hurt, it was a simple matter to shoot right through the door at the crook's voice. And I was right. Sorry I had to kill him. But it was the only way I could see to get him without danger to either of them. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. So you shot him by the sound of his voice. Exactly, Scubby. If he'd kept his mouth shut, I'd have had to agree with his terms. But he talked. He talked himself right into the hereafter. And I wonder if he can talk himself out of whatever he finds waiting for him there. This has been another of the strange adventures of Nick Carter, Master Detective which are brought to you regularly at the same time by W.O.R. Mutual. And now, let's ask Nick for a hint or two about a story for next week. How about it, Nick? Okay. Well, next week's strange adventure was strange indeed. Scubby started for Philadelphia to get some information I wanted. But he ended up in another city under another name and occupying a body that wasn't his. And then we found that somebody else had borrowed Scubby's body to kill a man. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm getting confused. Well, that's nothing to what was happening to poor Scubby. He didn't know who he was or what he was doing. And yet all the time, he was perfectly sane. And it wasn't until this boss crook, who called himself the mystic, tried the same thing on Nick that we really got anywhere at all. Well, it sounds like something out of the ordinary, to say the least. What do you call it? Murder by magic. Or the mystery of the missing identity. And that's all for now. So long. So long, everybody. And so long to you both, Nick and Patsy, until next week. In The Strange Adventure, you have just heard Nick Carter was impersonated by Lon Clark, Patsy by Helen Choate, Scubby by John Kane. Original music was played by Lou White. The entire production was written and directed by Jock McGregor. Next week at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter entitled... Murder by Magic. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Missing Identity. And now, a very special announcement. Beginning next week, the return of Nick Carter will be brought to you at a new time. 10.15 p.m. Eastern War Time on Saturday evenings. Remember... Beginning next Saturday, April 8th, The Strange Adventures of Nick Carter will come to you at 10.15 p.m. Eastern War Time, and at that same time each week thereafter. And don't forget that the adventures of Nick's adopted son, Chick Carter, are broadcast over most of these stations Mondays through Fridays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern War Time. This story is a copyrighted feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The return of Nick Carter is produced in the studios of WOR. This is Mutual. Mutual.